Hello, my name is Alcides Rodriguez and I play bass clarinet in the Atlanta Symphony. I am very delighted you have chosen to play the bass clarinet. It is a fun instrument to play and it has a beautiful and rich tone. You can enjoy playing it either in the band or in the orchestra. I hope this video helps you develop your skills to play the bass clarinet so you can have as much fun as I do playing this instrument. Some of you are probably very familiar with the clarinet. Maybe you started on playing clarinet or maybe you are still playing clarinet. So before I show you how to put the bass clarinet together, I want to go over a few of the differences between the bass clarinet and the clarinet. This way, you know, you can avoid mechanical problems with the instrument later on. First of all, the bass clarinet has these long rods in the lower joint. They are very long, also in this area, and the keys are very long. These rods are very soft and they bend easily. So the first thing you have to be careful with is make sure that you always grab the clarinet by the keys instead of by the rods. Okay, that way you will be holding it, pressing the, uh, the pads down. The pads, this is not necessarily the best solution, but the pads are tough and also very easy to replace. A bend key is not that easy to replace. Another important difference is that there is a bridge key on every joint of the bass clarinet. If you notice, the, the bell has a key that is supposed to assemble into the lower joint, and then the upper joint has two bridge keys that are supposed to assemble into the lower joint. Depending on the model of the bass clarinet you are playing, you might have only one bridge key on the upper joint. The neck also has a key that is supposed to assemble into the upper joint. So now that we know the differences between the bass clarinet and the clarinet, let's put the bass clarinet together. The first thing you need to do is getting your reed wet before you start practicing. So I'm going to get my reed out of the reed case. And there are two ways to get your reed wet. You can either put it in your mouth, like this, and hold it in your mouth while you put your clarinet together, or you can use a small container with water and put the reed in, like this. The reed will suck in as you put the clarinet together. If your instrument is new, you might find out that some of the corks in the joints might be a little bit swollen, or dry, making it very hard to put them together. So when needed, use a little bit of cork grease, you know, put it on the cork, and then rub it around with your finger. This will make it a lot easier. It will make the joints slide easily together. We are going to start from the bottom upwards. The first two pieces we are going to put together are the bell and the lower joint. Make sure that you press this key down on the bell to raise this lever up. And make sure that you are not pressing any of these thumb keys because that will bring this raise, this lever up. So you don't want to grind those keys together. So gently twist the bell in, keeping those two keys away. And then once the, the bell is in, swing it in. It's important that the bell is always aligned with these top keys on the clarinet, like that. At this point, Let's put the peg on. Usually the peg goes into the bell. Let's put it on like this. And tighten it up. And then rest your instrument on the floor. 
you can choose to put the peg on later on once you put the whole instrument together. It doesn't matter. You can do it now or later. Uh, you can also rest, if you are standing up, you can rest the instrument on your case while you put the, the upper joint on. As your instrument rests on the floor, it is okay to hold it in between your legs as you pick up the upper joint from your case. To properly assemble the upper joint into the lower joint, it's very important you are aware of these two bridge keys right here, this one and this one. You will have to press the A key down, this key right here, to bring this bridge key up and then press the D key down, this one right here, to bring this bridge key down. That way you will avoid grinding these keys against these keys right here. Okay, now we're going to gently twist it in, keeping those keys separate, and when the upper joint is all the way in, then just swing it in. Okay, now these two bridge keys, this one here and this one here, should, should align correctly. Now for some reason, in some bass clarinets, this is not possible. So you will find out that sometimes the front key will align correctly, but then the back is slightly off. That's okay. I would recommend that you try aligning the one in the front and leaving the, the one in the back slightly off. But you can also experiment, maybe aligning the one in the back and leaving the one in front slightly off. Just experiment and stick with a position that is better for you. Now, let's rest the instrument on the case or on a bass clarinet stand, whatever you have available. It's very important that when you rest the instrument on the case, make sure that the keys are always facing up like this. Make sure they always face up. I have seen people putting the bass clarinets in their cases like this, and that is not very good because when you do that, the keys can easily get bent. So make sure the keys are always facing up. Now, we are going to put the mouthpiece on the neck. Take the mouthpiece cuff off, the mouthpiece, and the ligature off too. And then let's twist the mouthpiece into the neck, like this. Make sure that as you face the neck, the flat part of the mouthpiece, this part here with the hole, is facing the ground or towards you. It needs to be facing down. Okay. Now we are going to go ahead and put the reed on. So at this point, take the reed out of the water container and place it on the flat part of your mouthpiece. I find it very easy to hold the, the mouthpiece and the neck together because the neck actually works as a handle. It's more comfortable to do this process. It's really uncomfortable to try to put the reed on as you hold just the mouthpiece. So always do it like this. Always try to hold the, the neck with the mouthpiece on. So now let's hold the mouthpiece on the back of your mouthpiece like that and just use this thumb to hold it in place like that. Now pick up the ligature from your case and now we're going to slide it onto the mouthpiece. As you do this, be careful not to damage the tip of the reed nor the tip of the mouthpiece. So be very careful as you do that. Slide it in. And then align your reed. Make sure that the reed is very centered in the mouthpiece. Make sure that it's not too far to the left 
or too far to the right. The top of the reed or the tip should be aligned with the tip of the mouthpiece. Okay? So now you can slide your ligature down until you can be below these lines on your mouthpiece. Some of the mouthpiece have these lines here, which is like a mark for the ligature. Some mouthpieces don't have this mark. So if your mouthpiece doesn't have this mark, you can also guide yourself by putting the ligature under this U shape on the reed. Just make sure you are below that. That's also a good mark. So once the ligature and the reed are in place, then gently tighten the screws on the ligature. Not too hard, just until they stop. There is a wide variety of ligatures in the market. Some of them have screws. Actually, most of them have screws. Uh, some of them have one screws or two screws like this one. Some of them have the screws in the bottom. No matter what, you always should make sure that your screws are on the right side. Now, let's put the neck on the clarinet. So, pick up your clarinet from your case or your stand, rest it on the floor, and we're going to gently twist the neck in. Now, again, be aware of these two keys here. They try not to get them too close. Just twist it in away from each other and then swing it in like that. This rod right here should align with the center of this key right here. Another important point I want to address is holding the bass clarinet. Make sure you always hold it by the lower joint, always. Never by the upper joint nor the neck. If you hold it on the upper joint, you are running the risk of having the lower joint coming off and going straight into the floor. This accident can cause serious damages to your instrument and sometimes permanent damages. Okay, so now we are ready to play. Good posture will allow you to use your air more efficiently and play your instrument more comfortably. To play the bass clarinet, you should sit on a tall chair. Always sit at the end of a chair or at the edge of the chair and make sure your back is straight. To play the bass clarinet, you are going to have to tilt your upper body forward a little bit, just like this. And your feet should be flat on the ground. In order for you to be comfortable in this position of leaning forward, I would recommend to have one foot in the front and one towards the back. That way, you can balance your body. It doesn't matter what foot is on front and which one is on the back. In fact, you can actually switch. Later on, if you get tired, you switch one to the back this way. So that's no problem. Breathing is also very important. And the bass clarinet is a big instrument and it requires a lot of air. So make sure you always take a full breath, inhaling through your mouth. Always inhaling through your mouth. Your neck and shoulders should be relaxed. Almost remember as when we were holding our arms down, just like that. And your shoulders shouldn't move when you breathe. But the area around your waist, this area down here, should expand when you breathe. So it's going to look, when you breathe, it's going to look like this. Notice that I'm expanding this area. When I breathe. When you inhale, do it gently and completely. Now, when we do it with a, with a mouthpiece in our mouth, it is important that you are going to inhale only through your corners. 
And it's also okay to take your lower lip off the reed, but it's important that you always keep your upper teeth on the mouthpiece. So basically, you should do it like this. Okay, always keeping your upper teeth on the mouthpiece. Hand position is very important. Your fingers should be curved, almost as if you are holding a softball. If you let your arms hang down and relax like this, and then slowly lift them up like that, you'll see that your fingers are curved naturally, see, like this. And also, your wrists are straight. That's the correct position you need to have, or that's the right position where your fingers need to be when you play the bass clarinet. Now, let's pick up the bass clarinet, and I'm going to show you how to hold it. To hold the bass clarinet, place your right hand thumb under the thumb rest, right here. Then place the left hand thumb on the thumb key. Then for the front keys, each one of these fingers is going to be in charge of an individual key, like that. So three keys here and three keys here. Then the pinkies are going to be in charge of touching these keys here and these keys right here. You don't have to touch them all, all at once, but just one at a time. Okay? Now, I want to point out that the left hand thumb should be placed at a diagonal, almost like pointing at two o'clock on the clock. And when you touch, the register key, you should just roll your thumb onto it. Basically, you should use only this area of your thumb, this very corner of your thumb, to touch the register key. So don't lift your thumb like this to, to touch the register key. Just roll it like that. You might find that you you probably need a neck strap when you do this. I don't use a neck strap, but if you need some extra support, go ahead and use one. I really recommend it. Now that you know how to hold the bass clarinet, you are ready to play. Embouchure is a very important part of playing bass clarinet and creating a good sound. To practice that, we're going to use just the mouthpiece and the neck. To form the bass clarinet embouchure, roll your lower lip over your teeth like this. Okay? Make sure that it's just firm. Make sure it's not tense or tight, just firm. And your chin, this area here, needs to be flat. So point it towards the floor like this. Your corners should be in. So bring your corners in, like this. And at that point, let's place the reed and the mouthpiece on your lower lip, like this. Maybe half an inch inside your mouth. Then you're going to place or rest your upper teeth on the mouthpiece, like this. It's very important that when placing the upper teeth on your mouthpiece, the angle we're going to use should be something like this. Basically, the, the lower lip should be a little bit lower than your upper teeth. That way, we create this angle we are looking for. If the teeth and the lower lip are, are parallel like this, you will be creating a straight angle. We don't want that. We want it to have it like this. So that's why 
the lower lip should be a little bit lower. And also, that will also allow the reed more space to vibrate. Okay, so now with all that in place, chin down, corners in, teeth on the mouthpiece, then we're going to tight the mouth around the mouthpiece, like this. Tongue position is also very important. Your tongue should be shaped like an arch inside your mouth when you work on your embouchure. An easy way to get your tongue to an arch position would be saying E. When you say E, like this, E, your tongue is automatically in an arch position. So that's another important aspect of your embouchure. I highly recommend that you practice your embouchure in front of a mirror. So that way you can monitor everything you are doing. You can make sure that your chin is flat, make sure that your corners are in, make sure that your teeth are in the right position on the mouthpiece. Do it in front of a big mirror. If you can, get a small mirror, small size mirror that you can place on your stand. It doesn't matter what size you use, as long as you can really see what you are doing with the embouchure. Now I'm going to show you how to play the first sounds on the bass clarinet. Once your mouthpiece and reed are assembled, form the embouchure around the mouthpiece, take a deep full breath through the corner of your mouth, and then close your mouth and slightly touch the reed with the tip of your tongue. As you do that, then blow air into the instrument or into the mouthpiece as you say T like this. If I do it without the mouthpiece, it's going to look something like this. Now, practice this several times until you feel comfortable with this. Once you feel comfortable, do this one. Play a long tone and then play a few repeated sounds by saying T, 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 T. Something like this. What I just did is what we call tonguing. 